like to bring the <coughs> August 20th Planning Board meeting to order. And you have the minute, minutes for the previous meeting, July 16th, uh, 2002, in front of you. Are there any uh, corrections, omissions? <coughs> Hearing none, I'll uh, yeah, I was going to do that next. Um, hearing no uh, corrections or admissions on the minutes of the July 16th meeting, uh, can I hear a motion that be approved? Mr. Chair, I have a motion that they be approved as presented. Motion's made and seconded. Any uh, further questions? All those in favor accepting the minutes, uh, please show by raising your right hands. All those opposed, the minutes are accepted as read. Um, we also have the minutes from our August 6th meeting, uh, which was uh, held in the council or the uh, uh, workshop session room. Do you see any corrections or any omissions in that? Uh, I hear a motion that we accept them as read. So moved. Uh, second. second, Mr. Chair. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor accepting them. Motion is accepted as read. We have uh, correspondence in front of us from, we have an email from Al Sawyer regard, regarding Blueberry Ridge. Uh, we have a planning board recommendation to the town council regarding the golf course zoning amendment. We have a planning commissioner's journal, summer 2002, the Maine Coast Week letter, parks and open space article, state wetlands alteration report summary. For new business this evening, we have a presentation uh, by the Cape Center, site Cape Health Center, site plan request by Dr. Craig Johnson for site plan review to convert the existing building located at 1226 Shore Road to a medical office and construct additions and a garage. Section 19-9 site plan complete. Mr. Wilcox, will you bring us up to date with the project at this time? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Just briefly to introduce, I'm Mark Wilcox, uh, and our architect and table is with us. This is uh, Dr. Johnson, Craig Johnson. Uh, he is the uh, uh, principal in, in Cape Family Health. And I guess uh, maybe the first thing you know, we can do is uh, Craig explain a little bit about uh, uh, how this all came to be, I guess.
I've been in practice here in Cape Elizabeth since 1986, and we've been through various machinations <coughs> and names uh, and now locations. Um, I brought my practice back from a, uh, an association with uh, my prior group to the 155 Sperlink Avenue address uh, last August 1st, 2001. And it was initially uh, my intent to remain at that location. Uh, when I became aware, though, of other opportunities, I thought that it would be very beneficial to me, and I thought very exciting to be part of the center of Cape Elizabeth and have our own identity within the community uh, as a family medical practice. So it was uh, once uh, I heard of the availability of the building that I spoke to the town and with Mike McGovern about the building and we reviewed it and found that it would be uh, really a, a very nice site to practice out of and something that we could really create uh, our own unique practice site. Uh, so I went ahead with the purchase of the property and in working with Mark and we developed some plans whereby we'd like to uh, enlarge and expand the building and renovate it in such a way that it would be uh, efficient and both fun, fun to practice in and something that we can use now and to grow into in the future. So we've come up with these design plans that uh, you've received copies of. We have the, uh, the pictures of the exterior and the general grounds here. Um, and certainly we'd like to proceed with any questions that you folks have. And uh, I'd like to thank Mark for the work that he's really put into this. He really has done an awful lot to prepare us for this evening and for this presentation. As a quick overview, I guess uh, what I uh, prepared is such an overview of the whole uh, project, including uh, both phases. Uh, is a site plan that shows the, the build out after the second phase. Uh, plans uh, for, the pro for the property uh, include immediate renovation of the inside of the building uh, to accommodate some uh, exam rooms. Uh, but then uh, phase one would be an addition on the east side of the building, this portion right here, and then phase two, uh, four more exam rooms that extend uh, toward the northerly Port Shore Road. Uh, <coughs> the existing uh, parking lot and paved driveway would remain unaltered. However, a uh, two-car garage uh, would be added down here, and, and actually car is probably a misnomer here. Uh, it would look like a two-car garage, however, it wouldn't be uh, most likely used for two cars coming in and going out twice a day. It would be used for storage, uh, trash, uh, lawn equipment, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> but the parking count, uh, the existing parking count, even, even after dropping two spaces, uh, is sort of guaranteed. Uh, access by people picking up trash and whatnot. Uh, even after dropping two parking spaces, uh, the number of spaces on the site uh, supports uh, the build out of the first of these two phases uh, that we have shown uh, for this application. Uh, the uh, only, uh, only, I guess, the other really noticeable change to the property. I would think the sort of uh, fences that are not in the best shape would be removed. Right now, the, the backyard is fenced in, uh, and those fences uh, would be removed. However, the, uh, the screen fence at the buffer at the end of the parking lot would remain uh, basically as is. Uh, <clears throat> no lighting would be added to the site uh, because it's already very well lit with uh, lamp poles, uh, uh, one in the parking lot and then a row of them uh, along the along the driveway and uh, a pole light at the uh, uh, smaller lantern up at the handicap parking spaces. Uh, there's, there's one small light on a set of egress steps 
uh, that wouldn't have to happen until phase two. Uh, basically, the, the layout of the project uh, is such that uh, phase one sort of mimics what's there right now in terms of egress patterns for the building. Uh, the people who are in these assembly rooms that are over on the east side of the building now uh, basically have the front door as their shortest uh, closest means of egress. Uh, and in phase one, that would continue to be the case. Uh, however, with the construction of phase two, uh, if, if you are in one of the most remote rooms, you're too far away from the front door to have the building qualify as a single means of egress building anymore. Uh, so a second means of egress uh, takes care of that problem. That's what the, uh, the, the small porch is. Uh, in the courtyard. Uh, with that, uh, I'll uh, turn discussion over to the board to uh, look at the application materials and if you have any questions uh, with them, we'd be happy to help out. Talk. There were a number of issues raised in the town planner's memorandum, and I'm just wondering if you could briefly touch on whether you're able to uh, address the issues that she has raised. Uh, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to review that memorandum. Uh, yes, I'd love to, to go through them and, and kind of give you an update on what we're That would be helpful. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in looking at the, uh, the planner's memo, uh, item number three mentions that the name and address of the owner should be added to the plans, ideally in the title block. Uh, <clears throat> for our second submission, we will, we will clarify that. Uh, right now, uh, it's called Cape Family Health, and we will uh, clarify whether, uh, who to put down in the title block. Uh, there are, uh, whether it's the owner of the prop the entity that actually owns the land or whether it's the entity that owns the building, but it will show up on the title block and include the, include the address. Um, <clears throat> item number four uh, references the fact that the lot line dimensions are on a survey that I included that's 10 years old and called uh, backup information. Uh, those, uh, the lot line dimensions from that survey uh, can, in fact, be transposed uh, onto the plans. Uh, they, they don't have the sort of typical note anyway that should be there that says these plans are based on the survey by name of the surveyor and when it was done and map and lot number and you know, the, the registry of deed information and all of that. That, would, that will be added also to the plans. Uh, this is one we haven't had a chance to run down, but the item number five is that when the, when the property was transferred, the town retained a right-of-way across the driveway, which is not shown on the plans. Uh, if we can come up with a graphic representation of that, we, we will, but at, at the very least, we will add a, uh, a registry uh, reference describing it, and I'll even see if we can come up with the, with the text describing the easement. I, mean, I should be able to get my hands on that. Uh, we, we didn't really address it uh, for this application because uh, we're really not doing any work over there. Uh, but to have that documented along with this application would be good for the file uh, for the property. Uh, the town engineer has requested that building dimensions and square footages of the additions be added to the, to the plans. And that's something that's, that's very simple to do. Uh, the, the dimensions themselves, the overall dimensions are on the architectural layout plans, but those can also be done on a, on a small diagram uh, on uh, drawing L1 and L2, which would then show, uh, show basically what's existing and then what's added, including the square footage. Uh, that will also help uh, to show that basically the, uh, 
uh, the zoning ordinance allows a footprint of 5,000 square feet. And in two stages over the course of the two phases, uh, this property will be increased to uh, approximately 4,000 square feet. And that would then sort of document that, not just in a letter, but actually have it on the plans, which would be good to have. Uh, now, number eight, the applicant requested at the workshop that the waiver be granted for uh, natural features information off of the property. Uh, we've sort of shown in the application where the buildings, adjacent buildings are, and uh, to the extent that the original survey showed uh, the trees they have been shown on uh, that are off the pop immediately off the property, we've, we've, we've shown those. Uh, but yes, we would continue to uh, request that waiver. Excuse me, if I recall correctly, I, I think at the workshop, the board was inclined to agree to that. Is that the recollection? Okay. Uh, item 11 is if the planning board will be requiring a sidewalk along the frontage of the property, sidewalk construction details will need to be added to the plans. Uh, uh, the, the presence of a sidewalk uh, is uh, not something that we have felt to date uh, would enhance the property or town center. Uh, and uh, it's something that really is uh, something that should be looked at in the field. Uh, the sidewalk, if, if a sidewalk were added, uh, it, would involve, uh, it would involve some, uh, well, obviously paving and some minor grading uh, along the front of the property. Also, uh, a, a moderate amount of clearing uh, in, in this area right here, although the sidewalk would be able to, you know, if, if, the, if there were to be a sidewalk, it probably would not wipe out those trees. So winding the sidewalk around, around the trees sort of causes more clearing also, but not by much more, like 20 feet. Uh, it's, it's something that, uh, in the field, uh, the sort of uh, the sort of use and, and destination, and uh, and actual sort of uh, improvement that the sidewalk would generate uh, does seem to be questionable. But we would like uh, the board to address this also. Uh, item number twelve: No design information regarding the existing septic system has been provided as part of the transfer of the property town paid sewer connection fee for the lot. Uh, the existing septic system uh, was uh, built with, uh, we don't know exactly when. Uh, it's presumably it was designed uh, to accommodate the flows of a three bedroom house. Uh, the system to date, uh, as far as we know, and uh, in conversations with the town, has not malfunctioned uh, and is continuing to serve the property. Uh, we spoke with uh, uh, Alfric Associates, who informed us that the conversion of a house uh, to a general medical practice uh, of general practitioners, uh, in and of itself, uh, poses no uh, threat to a septic system. Uh, it's not the type of use where uh, volumes of, of, of chemicals that would affect the bacterial action in the system are, are put down the drain. So that there wasn't anything automatic uh, that would make you say uh, a septic system is not uh, a good fit for a small medical practice. Uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the things that we did was uh, we looked at uh, the design flows under current plumbing code and wastewater disposal rules uh, for the building. And the, the targeted use uh, seems to fit. Uh, upon occupancy, it would obviously then be something that could be uh, more carefully monitored and quantified. Uh, basically, what we have, uh, the kitchen will be removed. There are two bathrooms. Uh, one of them is actually a half bath. 
Uh, the full bath has a shower, which is never used. Uh, between the two bathrooms, there are uh, two uh, low-volume toilets, which were changed out when the community center was renovated, uh, and two hand-washing sinks. Uh, phase one will uh, put in another, uh, I believe, four or five hand-washing sinks. Phase two would put in another four hand-washing sinks. Uh, there would be no laundry facilities. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure how much actual use hand-washing sinks in exam rooms actually get. Uh, there would be no uh, high volume uh, equipment cleaning or dishwashing sorts of things going on there. There will be a small uh, lab. Uh, lab is, is, a, is a convenient term. Uh, it is not a uh, sort of place that processes large volumes of soiled dishware or contaminated material. It's a, it's a place where you get your blood drawn and a, and, a few, uh, and a few things get washed up and there's a small autoclave uh, and a microscope for looking at, at uh, samples. So it's, it's not like a big hospital lab. Lab is, in this case, is more of a familiar term, if you will, describing something that where some of the functions of a full laboratory take place. Uh, those things uh, being considered and um, the fact that the, the flows in all likelihood will not approach the 270 gallons per day uh, that the uh, original systems would hopefully accommodate. Uh, and moreover, the fact that 270 is the minimum value for a three three-family home, there is a range where it goes up even, even higher. Uh, we have felt that continuing the use of, this, of the system uh, should pose no problems or a threat to uh, the neighborhood or, or the property. Uh, obviously, uh, there are details which would need to be worked out with regards to uh, the state plumbing code and the application by Dr. Johnson for a building permit to add more hand washing sinks, which would involve adding some sinks. Uh, the, at, at that point in time, uh, obviously, any questions or doubts of the building inspector would have to be uh, satisfied. If the planning board uh, wishes, we can begin that process sooner, uh, but we will be doing it. Uh, in terms of uh, connecting to the sewer, uh, the closest sewer is at the top of the hill, uh, almost as far as the scout house on the scout house side of the road. Uh, it's the better part of 300 feet away. If it were less than 200 feet away, uh, state plumbing code would allow the town to decide whether or not to impose a forced connection to the sewer. Uh, that's not the case, uh, given the fact that the, that the uh, nearest sewer manhole is so far away. Uh, from, the owner, from an owner's perspective, uh, you know, it's a long way away. The existing system is functioning fine. Uh, septic engineer has said there should be no problems with its continued use uh, and it could be through ledge every inch of the way to get there uh, so since the layout of the parcel doesn't interfere with the existing septic system uh, the disposal uh, area is in the backyard right right about there uh, we have opted uh, for this application uh, to continue its use. Uh, there's a low water requirement uh, for the building. Uh, it's served now by uh, what the survey says is an existing three-quarter inch pipe. Uh, there's a water main in the street that can provide uh, the water that would be necessary for hand washing sinks and low flush toilets. There are no flush valve or, or high pressure type water devices in the building. 
Uh, in fact, the uh, water district representative was uh, somewhat confused that we asked them for a letter saying there's water to serve a house that already has water connected to it. Uh, but we can, we can go further on, on that front if you wish also. Uh, the, in, the long, in the long term, however, uh, it would be beneficial uh, to the owner to have a sewer connection. Uh, and, what, and, that would be, and that would be something that uh, Craig has indicated he'll be, he would be interested in pursuing uh, if, in fact, there were a sewer in front of the property and not 280 feet away. I guess I touched on item 12C at the same time there. Uh, 12D, the applicant should provide information regarding solid waste storage. Uh, I mentioned storage in the application in the garage. Well, that's the solid waste storage uh, site. Uh, the engineer uh, referenced biohazard waste. Uh, biohazard materials and sharps uh, are collected in special uh, tamper-proof containers uh, and removed by a vendor for uh, disposal according to, well, whatever the rules are for incineration, basically, uh, at a biohazard incinerator. Uh, the item number 13, the site includes a heavily vegetated buffer on the west side. The applicant should indicate on the plan where and how the buffer will be preserved or if new vegetation would be planted to create a buffer. Uh, the buffer on the west side right now is uh, mixed uh, hardwood and evergreen with mostly an open understory and uh, sort of a forest duff floor. Uh, as a result of the, ex of the expansion, uh, the uh, tree line will be, will be pulled back. Um, right, right now it's just off the west, the east end of the building, so it's about right about here. And the addition goes out 32 feet. The tree line will have to be pulled back 32 feet also. Uh, the uh, landscape architect who I talked to recommended as sort of a healing uh, and softening uh, effect for this, some of the, the plantings that are shown on the planting plan uh, on drawing L3. Uh, it includes some large uh, deciduous shrubs in here and some lilac trees here and we, we also added some decorative plantings uh, out at the front. Uh, one of the features of the site that, uh, that you'll notice is that it slopes off. It, it drops off right now. Uh, and that, that same drop off would then also happen as part of the proposed expansion also. Uh, right now, it has a fairly flat lawn as you come on, as you're across the front of the building right here, and then around the small sewing room, the land drops off. Uh, we would maintain that same concept with the land dropping off uh, as you work your way around the east side of the building. Uh, so rather than keeping, rather than adding more fill uh, to bring ground up within a couple of feet of the floor, uh, which, which is, you know, you, you always do for a more finished appearance in front of the house. Being at the side of the house, the lesser amount of fill, uh, most importantly, uh, saves uh, a large uh, pine tree right, right here uh, so that we don't have to fill around the pine tree. Basically enough fill to uh, uh, come up uh, half to two-thirds of the way on the foundation wall to get frost cover for the footings. Uh, these uh, these uh, viburnums, which are shown on the planting plan, I, I've got some information on them if you'd like to, to see it. They, they grow to be on the order of 10 feet around and 10 feet high. Uh, they are flowering. And what they would do uh, really is they're, they're, they're planted down at the lower elevation, so they, they wouldn't grow up and, and hide the house completely. Uh, but they would hide this slope 
and this sort of and the little and the little bit of exposed foundation wall down there, and still allow uh, uh, views from the house sort of out over them. But then, as you look back from the other side, uh, from from the lower elevation, they would they would screen screen the building. Uh, the, the lilacs that are shown uh, are, are sort of intended to to help divert attention from the fact that this is all sort of new and cut and trimmed and and carved out of the uh, you know out of what used to be uh, you know, a larger treed area. So that right as you as you look at the building, uh, lilacs have done well in front of the building, and it's a partly shaded location. Uh, a group of lilacs in phase two right here, in phase one about right here, uh, would sort of frame and kind of distract attention a little bit from looking down the new freshly cut alleyway. Uh, the lilacs are, uh, you know, are, are very hardy and, and easily moved and, uh, and would sort of help the sort of impression of that newly cut area uh, fairly quickly with a, with a large group of them like that. Uh, so those are, uh, those are basically our, our approaches uh, to completing, uh, filling out this requested information for the next meeting. Uh, we, we, we would like to be able to, uh, if you're interested, uh, look at the immediate environment uh, in in the field uh, to look at uh, at uh, the uh, the question of a sidewalk and uh, and I would then hopefully be able to wrap it up uh, for next month's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Sherado. Uh Yeah, Mark. I just have a couple of questions on the septic issue. Uh, the first is, uh, it's indicated here that, that uh, the design flows were determined to be 245 GPD and it was permitted for this use. Is that documented anywhere? Um, that it was permitted, it was for, permitted that? for that flow. Uh, in 1991, when the property was converted uh, from a single family house to uh, a community center, I'm not sure anybody would say it was an assembly use. Uh, documentation was put in the site plan review file uh, by the landscape architect at the time uh, that there would be 49 people visiting the facility uh, and under uh, assembly use type seats, right. they, would, they would generate five gallons per day each. And, and that documentation satisfied the conversion of the existing septic system from a single family use uh, to an assembly use. Uh, what we're looking at here is uh, uh, seems to be uh, a, a similar sort of thing, uh, converting from a single family house uh, to a uh, office building, basically. Right, but but is there anything that can go in the file in the application that it w would at least establish that number, that 245? Um, uh, or is it? Well, that that 245 is based <coughs> on uh, staffing levels of Cape Family Health and requirements of the Maine State Plumbing Code. Uh, one could take issue with the fact that no I guess what I was asking about I, and I'm going to get to that but the, all, I'm, all I'm saying is that the for purposes of the application where it's indicated that the 245 was permitted for this use is there something that oh, that would document that in the application so that in the future you could see that yes the use had already been permitted for the 245 GPD and you can go from there I don't think there's anything in the plan file. When we, I looked through the plan file. There's a letter from the applicant saying, here's how we're going to name this beast. Right. Uh, I didn't actually read through the minutes of the planning board meeting. 
Uh, so I don't know. I mean, there, there isn't a letter from the code of code official at that time okay, saying that's yes, what this, I was, is, okay. this is. So or I didn't see it at any rate. In other words, yes, this is hunky dory. It was like apparently just accepted. Right. Implicit in the fact that that was the use and it was approved. That's the approval, so to speak. Right. Of that. Okay. Yeah. But my next question does go to your the the calculations for the design flows. Um, and I, I don't know if Dr. Johnson wants to answer this. The, the in terms of medical staff, office staff. Uh, how is that broken out? I mean, is, is there, uh, I assume medical staff is yourself, and then is there a nurse practitioner, or are these office staff people purely office administrative people? Or? I have uh, a nurse practitioner who would also serve in multiple roles. Okay. Um, I mean, with the time that you've said, Okay. So the, the one provider is a combination of yourself and the nurse practitioner, basically. Right. And another thing that uh, in talking to Frick Associates, the, the, the section of the plumbing code that, that governs this now, uh, it never used to be there before, uh, the most recent edition of the plumbing code. Uh, a practice such as this always used to be just a, an office practice, an, an office use, basically a, bus a business. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there was a change uh, in the most recent uh, plumbing code uh, which adopts the category of uh, medical use uh, in which it includes an 80 gallon per day requirement uh, for a medical practitioner. Do they define that at all? They, they don't define it. It's a catch-all category that could conceivably then govern anything from a hospital from main medical center to this facility. Uh, our, our approach uh, will be uh, in documenting uh, this, in, in trying to come up with something uh, that's fair, equitable, and allows the owner to document actual water use. Uh, because it's really not fair to put on the owner uh, a septic system requirement that, that would handle hundreds of more gallons a day than would ever be needed. Uh, it, 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 it's come up this way uh, really purely uh, because of the property changing hands and the use changing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was something where, and it's something where uh, unfortunately we couldn't document it today uh, because Dr. Johnson's practice was merged in a much larger building and so we didn't have access to, we didn't have the ability to say, you know, here's one guy who Granted, he washes his hands once an hour, but uh, you know it's not 80 gallons a day. Uh, yeah, I'm so. kind of surprised at that. So, for medical staff, yeah, so and definition whether it went beyond. So, what he was I mean, we we will be uh, generating professional information on this for the code officer, uh, and we'll and we will work with him to come up with hopefully something that's reasonable. Right. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Griffin, I have a question for the town planner. Maureen, when the Scout House property is fully developed and complete, will the town sewer connections be closer to Dr. Johnson's property? Um, when, and, and I don't know where you started measuring the 300 feet from, Mark, but I think in our staff review meeting we had measured it from the point where the, the scout house connection would be and I thought that the town engineer was said it was 190 feet. But the, the connection is basically where the front door of the existing house is now, right now, give or take a few feet. Thank you. 
Dr. Johnson, I have a question. Uh, when the second phase is put in <clears throat> or as part of, of final approval, would you have any objections to uh, agreeing to connect to the public sewer if the system failed uh, before you began phase two? Excuse me, Dr. Johnson, could you address it? Um, we're on television here, we may not be able to pick up your... When I first uh, looked at the property and looked at the, uh, uh, the information provided by the town, uh, the statement was that there was uh, public water, electricity, sewer, uh, and telephone available to the building. Uh, and uh, that was important, and it wasn't until after I had placed my bid for the property that I discovered that, um, that the sewer, there was no sewer connection to the building. I had assumed that, that there was. Um, I had discussions with Mike McGovern at that time, and uh, we uh, made the decision to go ahead and even apply for the sewer connection permit. Uh, and that's how it's stated um, uh, in the note from the town. So, in fact, a sewer application has already been made, and it's my intent, when possible, uh, to move forward with that. Uh, I feel that uh, as part of a, a business zone, I think that it's appropriate to have sewer available to the properties within the, uh, the business area, and uh, I would like to see that at some point in the near future. Thank you. Any further discussions? I have a question, Mark. Um, did you indicate you would seek a letter from the Portland Water District um, certifying adequate water supply? Because it, you know, it's not a single-family home anymore, and it's not a community center anymore. It's going to be an entirely different use. And I wasn't clear whether you were going to get that or not. Uh, yes, we can get something from them. Okay. Uh, there's, they were just a little confused and didn't really respond. Uh, to our first request because there already is water at the house, uh, but I'm sure they can document the size of the main and the availability of the water, and we can include that uh, for you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. One more question. In the next set of plans, will you be uh, providing for a sidewalk? Uh, it's not our intention at this time. Not your, okay. We'd, uh, we'd love to talk to you about it on the site and uh, see how you feel about it. Uh, it you're probably aware in the, uh, a recent project approved in the town center, we, we did end up requiring that a sidewalk be installed. And, uh, I think that's definitely going to be an issue that at least some of us are going to want to pursue. Yes. Yeah. It, it seems to be a different environment, if you will, when you're further down the hill. Uh, and there are different issues involved with stormwater drainage. Uh, and construction and clearing and and cutting down a lot of trees and whatnot. But we'd be happy to explore it with you. Would you like? To, would the board like to go through the list and double check the list before the, or the of the completeness? Anybody have any questions regarding some of the items on there that? I guess there are issues about completeness, but given the representations that these things will be included on the subsequent plan, it could be deemed complete as of that point. I don't know how we do that, but I certainly wouldn't want to hold up um, the applicant when they recognize the things that need to be put on the plan, which are fairly minor, and I assume they'll be there. So. Uh, Any other concern? I guess with that understanding that the things we talked about that will be on the future plan will make it complete, then I don't, I don't have any problem with completeness. 
Hearing no other objections, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider. <clears throat> Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Dr. Craig Johnson also doing business as Fox Trot Properties for a site plan review of the conversion of the existing building located at 1226 Shore Road to the Cape Health Center with two additions and the construction of a two-car garage be deemed complete. Second. I hear a motion made and seconded. Do I have any further discussion? And I will raise it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion in front of the House, please show by raising your right hand. The motion carries. Mr. Chairman, may we poll the board to see the need of a site walk before we consider the next motion? Um, that'd be fine. How does everybody feel about that? Do you think a site walk is necessary? I personally would like to visit it either as part of the group or myself um, to resolve the sidewalk issue. Um, I mean, it is centrally located, and I'm happy to do it as a formal site walk or just go there on my own. Um, I guess if, if I'm hearing what the applicant has to say, it appears that they have some strong ideas about the sidewalk that they would like to impart and discuss with us at the site. Is that correct? So perhaps a formal site visit would be more appropriate so we could have the benefit of, of their input. I would like to suggest a very quick early morning site walk, <laughs> either weekday or weekend, <laughs> maximum of 30 minutes. <laughs> Does that fit with you? Is that something you'd like to do on a schedule, or would you rather we do it on our own? Sounds as though that, and if a site walk was taken, we'd have to do it before the 17th, but um, yeah. we could have a formal site walk uh, if there was a convenient time. That was I know we normally do these on Saturday morning, but given the summer, I'm wondering if we could do it early on a weekday. I agree. Yeah, I'd, I'd prefer a weekend. Anything in particular? <laughs> Anything but a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I have I, Thursday and Friday of this week would work for me. I don't know if we can yeah. get it together that quickly. So we could do it. How about Thursday? Thursday morning this week for 30 minutes. What time? How early? 8 o'clock. 7.30. I can do 7.30 if you want to get it out of the way. <laughs> I can do morning. <laughs> Should we do it 7.30 Thursday morning this week? Sure. Is that all right with you? Uh, we could meet right there in the parking uh, lot? I'm sorry. I just have to work on that emergency room. Okay. Wednesday night. So it's difficult for me to get there by 7.30. Friday morning? Friday morning, then? Friday. Friday. Okay, so it's Friday the 6th, 7.30 a.m., in, the, in your parking lot. That's all right with you. It's informal and as quick as we can do it. Yeah. I think it will help everybody here. Thank you very much. When is the deadline for the September A week from Friday. A week from Friday. This coming Friday. The last, the last work day of August. August. Okay. So, so. Uh, I'm wrong. Uh, this week. I, I'm sorry. I said September 6th. I'm a, um, it would be Friday the 23rd. I'm sorry. I had bumped my calendar. 
August 23rd, 7.30 a.m. Okay. Anything else? Mr. Griffin, I have a motion for the board to consider. Be it further ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular September 17th, 2002 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be scheduled. I'm willing to delete the public hearing. I don't personally see a need for it. So you would make a motion that would delete the public hearing? Yep. I, I, I don't see why we not have the public hearing. Yeah, I, I, don't think I agree with you, David. It will be over within 30 seconds because right. no one will be here. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, then. Okay. It's not going to delay. It's not, not going to delay things, right? So, you read. Wait, so. so would you like to reword it? As it's written, be it further ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular September 17, 2002 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be scheduled. Motion's been made. Do I hear a second? It's been seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then I will raise it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion in front of the house, please show by raising right hand. Motion carries. So we will see you on Friday and on the 17th. Hopefully. Do I hear any further new or old business in front of the board? Hearing none, uh, could I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Motion's been made. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned.